Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks, Amal, uh, for the opportunity, and uh, welcome everyone to, to this webinar. All right. Uh, to answer your question, I think uh, COVID nineteen has had uh, quite a big impact uh, all around the world um, for the education sector specifically. And what you asked uh, Aman about the the number of students and the mobility of students across uh, different countries, it has had a major impact. To some extent, it was kind of very ad hoc reactions or plans that we we saw happen it, it kind of brought the whole uh, education system to a standstill for some time it also had made us realize uh, quite a few things you know like firstly working online or studying online is possible i mean this technology has been around for a while there had been distance education online education and stuff but the impact that COVID-19 has had on this, it, it is enormous. What, what I see is, or what I feel is, online education is not, is not going to be here just for, just temporarily because of COVID, but it is going to be the new norm. You know, people uh, realized that learning things online is possible and it is also enjoyable. You know, it is not just being boring as, it, as people used to perceive before. So that is one thing that is one thing that I think uh, has affected. So distance learning or online learning is going to be a norm in the future. And it is also made it has also reiterated the point that many big companies like Google, Amazon and others have told over and over again. And specific especially in in Australia, we have seen these companies even getting uh, removing their uh, graduate recruitment criteria where they say we don't even need you to have any formal qualifications show me that you can perform show me your skills show me your capabilities and we will hire you so that is already putting universities and the entire education sector on a back foot if that becomes something real and more uh, more adopted from a lecturer's perspective or, or from a teacher's perspective they realize that online teaching is possible you know i mean you can manage a large cohort of 100 or 200 students remotely via zoom or any other kind of a platform although these platforms were there although these technologies were there in the past the lecturers were not were hesitant to use it you know i mean they, they would not use it until it was really necessary but now you realize that it is possible you know for sometimes one of the things that we see here is uh, as teachers as lecturers we have to reach university uh, well uh, early in the morning you know why because we have to find parking on campus finding a parking is difficult you know so now we don't have to rush early in the morning to go find a parking I don't need to pay parking fees uh, which is quite a lot I save on fuel I don't need to drive my car so this environment this situation has had some positive impact on the life of teachers or lecturers now let's look at it from a student perspective what are students thinking about this situation initially they were like oh online is not going to be the way i, I don't really enjoy uh, studying in an online mode it is not meant for me i want to go into the lecture i want to listen to the teacher speaking but when when we were forced to change our way of life suddenly it has become a norm people are, uh, are managing with this new way of work new way of learning it is also less intimidating, especially if you are an introvert, you know, you don't like to speak too much in a class, but you're like more of a receptive kind of a student. It is good for you. I mean, it is good for those kind of people, uh, those kind of students uh, as well. When you, when you think about all this, you know, you, you realize that how are universities or educational institutions going to handle this challenge? COVID has become a catalyst to bring about a lot of changes in the way things are, are going to operate. It brings up a very fundamental question for universities and educational institutions to think is what is the value that we are offering to our students? You know, most of the knowledge is freely available now. I mean, if you do not want a degree, you can learn everything online. It is there for free and it is very affordable as well if it is not free. You look at courses on Udemy, Coursera, edX, your name. Learning things has, has become very easy and very engaging as well. And I think that is what um, the universities or education institutions should think about. We have been struggling for a long time about how we are going to engage students you know that has been a challenge for universities 20 years ago and it is a challenge even now uh, students are just not interested what can you do to make them interest uh, catch their interest you know make them engaged in what you're trying to teach so i see going into the future the job of a lecturer or a teacher is going to become very difficult and it is going to be very different than what it is what it is now 
it's no longer going to cut if you're just going to go and present your lectures, present your lecture slides to the students. Students might already know what you're going to talk, what you're going to talk about. So how we are going to upskill our academics, I think is one of the biggest challenge. I'll just give you an example of myself. Two months ago, yeah, when we started lockdown, when I decided to stay home, I thought, what is it that I can do in this time that I would remember? I would say that because of the lockdown, I started something and I learned a new skill. And you know what I did, what I learned? I started to make videos and I started to share my knowledge on research, on how to do research to budding researchers, MPhil students, so PhD students. And you would not imagine in two months time, starting from nothing, I had no idea of how to do graphic design. I had no idea of editing a video. I didn't even have a software for doing all these things. But now if you look at my YouTube channel, you would realize that what is, that, what is possible, you know? No one told me that prepare yourself, do something, learn how to do videos. I took it as a challenge. I took it as an opportunity uh, to do it and I did it. And you will realize how the skill has built up. The first of the videos that I've added were poorly edited. The one that I added recently yesterday, you can look at the stark difference in the quality of the editing. So this is a skill that I have acquired. And same thing we would want our academics to do as well. They would need to learn new tools, new techniques to make their content engageable. You have to engage your students very well when you're when you're going to deliver what you're going to deliver. So I think for universities, the value it has to be made more visible. Why should students go to university? That aspect, that question is a fundamental question that needs to be answered and it has to be convincing and very justifiable. And interestingly, you know what? When I did this video, I sent it to our photographer at Curtin, asking him for some feedback. And he was like, Vidi, if you start doing such videos, I will be out of job. You know, so he was like, <laughs> I was surprised by his feedback. Okay, one more thing I want to mention is, people are talking a lot about challenges in this situation. But what I think is, look for opportunities. If there is a challenge, challenge equals an opportunity. We spoke a lot about how a lot of things can be done online. You know, uh, teaching can be done online. But there are some things which are not possible to be done online, right? For example, if I'm studying chemistry or physics, I need to have specific equipments yeah, or chemicals to do my experiments. How can I do that online? You know, I, I, can, I, I could just do simulations, but that will not give me the real effect. That is a challenge. But does that give you an opportunity? Think about from an entrepreneur's perspective. Do I see a business value there? Do I see a business proposition there? And the answer is yes. Why not I set up a company that makes small chemical kits, you know, uh, lab kits that I can sell for say 500 rupees or whatever. And every student buys it and they can do these experiments at home. You know, that, that is a different way of thinking about opportunities that can be created uh, due to the current environment that we are in. Another thing I see a lot uh, discussion happening around the web and, and in social media is, oh, there are a lot of opportunities that are going to be lost. Uh, companies that are not starting projects or they have canceled projects. I may or may not get my placements and uh, things, things like that. Again, look at the bright side of it. If there are some projects that have gone, there are a lot of other projects that have started because of this. You know, some things that would not even have happened had suddenly become a priority. And those are the projects, those are the opportunities that you can tap into. One more thing, I think I read, uh, I saw this somewhere online uh, and it was kind of a funny, funny joke. They were saying, what is my career? What should be my career? And the response was, look outside as of now, who has a job, who is working? And that is a, a career that you should think about, think about taking. I guess I think uh, that that's pretty much I wanted to share on this topic. Um, yeah, so over to you, Aman.